I'm Sarah, and I'm going to be giving the presentation today on how to introduce 3D printing into your classroom. So as you know, we're iDesign. This is our team, Andy and Mario on the top right hand corner. They are our co-founders. Uh, Dean on the right hand side, top right, is our in-house training expert and our Canadian sales rep. So this is the individual who you'd go to if you have any questions about products or team support information, anything like that, you can go to Dean. He is on the call today if you wanted to ask any questions directly to him as well. Um, and we also have Scott, Brett, and Stephen, who are our US sales rep, and I'm at the bottom right there, and I'm the marketing specialist on the team. So we are our design. I know, you know you've been on some of these presentations before, so you know what we're all about. But we've been in business for over 20 years in the education industry and working with teachers such as yourself with schools across North America to provide the STEM products to students. So Dex Robotics is our number one top selling product, but we do have a full lineup of STEM solutions. So we do have ro other robotics and coding products, 3D printers, laser cutters and engravers, all the way to different types of software for the education space. <clears throat> so today we're going to be going through a few items regarding 3D printing, whether it's history of 3D printing, different ways to get started in your lessons, or the health and safety. So I'm going to get right into it, starting with the history of 3D printing. So the earliest 3D printing, printing technology first became visible in the late 1980s. And at this time it was actually referred to as rapid prototyping technology. And that's because the process was originally made as a fast and cost-effective method for creating prototypes for product development. A few years afterwards in 1989, uh, this is when Scott Crump, who is a co-founder of Stratacy Inc, filed a patent for the fused deposition modeling process. This is a proprietary technology which is still held by the company today and it's actually the process that's used by many of the entry level machines. And I'll go over in a few slides what exactly that process looks like. But Matt, I wasn't until about Oh, go ahead. Do you have a question? Yeah, are, can we get a copy of the slides? Yeah, of course, I'll send them afterwards for you, Penny. Thank you. And I'll send you the uh, recording as well, too. Okay. Yeah. Um, so about 20 years later, that's when they introduced 3D printing uh, available for commercial use. But what's important is what you introduce to your students in the classroom today could exponentially change when you begin when they begin working in their careers as new material becomes available or new ways of using the printer advances. So that's why it's important to see the evolution of where we began because of the huge potential that of where this could go. And it's still in its early stages and more and more industries are, are seeing the potential and exploring 3D printing. So for example, in medicine, doctors were among the first to explore 3D printing. So already we've seen 3D printed ears, arms, legs, muscles, and 3D printers have also been used to produce artificial tissues, cells, and even skin. But apart from replacement body parts, it's actually increasingly being used for medical education and training. So for example, at the Nicholas Children's Hospital in Miami, Florida, surgeons practice surgery on a 3D printed replica of children's hearts. So these 3D printed plastic hearts make it possible for surgeons to practice operations with no risk. Now, elsewhere in the country, or the world, the same technique is being used to rehearse brain surgery as well. And other industries are also using 3D printers, such as the aerospace industry. As you know, spacecrafts are more complex than airplanes, and they also have the added drawback that you sometimes only make one of them. So instead of going to all that expense of making unique tools and manufacturing equipment, it can make a lot more sense to just 3D print one-off components instead. So on the right hand side here, it's NASA's Perseverance rover and it actually carries 11 metal parts made with 3D printer printing material. So these parts were 3D printed, they have three or four times less mass than if they were produced conventionally. So obviously these techniques have allowed the team to achieve for a lower mass and high precision that they couldn't have done before with the conventional fabrication. But I wanna back up a little bit, um, maybe I've gone a little bit too far, I'd wanna explain what exactly is 3D printing. And at the most basic, the differentiating principle behind 3D printing is that it is an additive manufacturing process. And that's fundamentally different than any other existing traditional manufacturing technique. Um, but you may be still be scratching your head at what this term means. So let me just explain it a little bit further. So traditional methods of production, it includes 
subtractive methods or molding. So the subtractive process involves removing material from a solid block. You can either cut it, bore, drill, grind, and then you create a product, which is either used for prototyping or tooling, or it's an end use product. The issue with this is that this process can result in up to 90% of the original block being wasted. So that obviously is not fantastic. On the other hand, the additive manufacturing process is carried out layer by layer. So it brings a three-dimensional digital object into a physical form by laying down many successive layers of a material. So as you can see by the video, we are adding material to create the final project. Now, like I mentioned, the most popular process is called fused deposition modeling, also referred to as FDM, and it's trade named and registered by Strategy, and that was first introduced in 1989. So this process works by melting the plastic filament, which is then deposited via the heated extruder, and it's deposited one layer at a time onto the building platform according to the 3D data that's supplied to the printer. So each layer hardens at, as it's deposited and it, and it bonds to the previous layer. So basically that heated extrusion head that you see, it never moves, but the platform will move to create each of the layers. <clears throat> but before you actually begin printing, you have to create a 3D printer file. And these are made with CAD, which is computer aided design software. And this actually allows you to create the model that you want to work with. So as you can see here on the left hand side, uh, this head is the CAD model that you would like to print. After you create the model, you have to export it into a, a printable file called the STL file before you can actually input it into the 3D printers slicing software. And this software basically tells the printer what each of the layers will look like when it's printed. So just to give you an example of some software that you could use for, for CAD, uh, there is Tinkercad, which is an easy to use 3D CAD design tool, and it's a free online tool to use. There's SketchUp, which can be really useful to introduce people to 3D printing because anyone can 3D model and print an object with its first use. And last is Fusion 360, which is a cloud-based 3D modeling tool from Autodesk. And it's usually used for product design and manufacturing. But maybe you're thinking, whoa, I'm not sure I could do that, let alone teach my students that. And I don't even know where to start with creating a model. Well, if you want some video tutorials and guidance on how to use a variety of CAD programs to get the basics, we'd highly recommend using 3dmadeeasy.com. So these are one-to-one -one recordings made available online, which will give you a good solid introductory grounding into the 3D titles. And then afterwards, you can develop that base knowledge through a problem solving based approach. So this 3D Made Easy is available through iDesign. And if you're interested, you can reach out to Dean for more information on that product. Now, if that seems a little bit too intimidating, intimidating to get into at the moment, don't worry, you can still get into 3D printing without having to learn CAD software at the moment. The key is to start small and then work your way up. So one suggestion is using Thingiverse because you can find hundreds of printable files that are ready to be printed. So I do want to switch my screens now and I will show you what Thingiverse looks like and I'll show you some examples. So bear with me, I will just change my screen here. Perfect. So this is what Thingiverse.com looks like. So this is actually a design community that was created by MakerBot. So this is the main homepage, and if you scroll down, there's different blocks, and these are all different projects and CAD files that have been uploaded by the community. So there's quite a few different varieties. So say, for example, I just click on this first one here. It's a, a drink dispenser. What The first thing that you're going to see um, is a, a plethora of images. So it basically shows you what the user has uploaded in terms of the product, what the CAD file looks like, and sometimes it will show you the different pieces. It just depends on the user and what photos they've uploaded. So as you can see here, we have a photo of what this pop can holder looks like. Uh, if we scroll a little, little bit further, we see what the CAD designs actually look like um, that they are providing you. If we scroll down past the photos, there's actually a few tabs. <clears throat> so all of these sections here are actually tabs that you can click on. So the first thing is thing detail. Now this just gives a summary of what the item is based on what the user has put. So this one says it's a drink organizer. You can have always pulled drinks. It gives you 
<clears throat> excuse me, it gives you the dimensions of that specific product. And it even goes into print settings. Now, not everybody in the community will put this much data in this summary section, but some users will, such as this person has a post-production video as well, which is fantastic. So you can watch a video of what it looks like. The second tab here is thing files. So if you click on this, this is where you can actually download the file. So these are the STL files that you would be uploading to the printer slicer program. And you can download, download them all at a time. You can download one at a time, just depends on what you're looking to do. If you're doing the whole file, I'd suggest downloading all. Uh, the next here is 58 comments. So these are people in the community who are either asking a question about it or they're making a comment about the printing. So for example, the first comment here, it's small four by four pieces are off in dimension. So it's not large enough to fit a can. So if you're looking to use this as a, <clears throat> a drink dispenser that fits the regular size, um, I think it's 370 milliliter cans, then this is going to be too small. So if re reading the comments, you can actually see how you could improve the product or if it's something that's worthwhile to print, for example. And then if we go to the fourth tab, it's makes. So this tab shows you people in the community who have actually made the product and they're showing what their final product looks like. So we've got a pink model, a purple model and an orange model. So all people that have created this drink dispenser. And the last I want to show you is remixes. So this basically is an alteration of the original design. So like I mentioned, this specific model doesn't um, account for the 12 ounce cans. So this person has now modified the CAD files to include this 12 ounce can dispenser. So now you can modify the designs and see what other people in the community have done to modify the design. So there are quite a few resources in each of the um, uploads for each of the CAD files. And I do want to go back to the homepage and I'll show you some of the advanced filters that you can use, um, that you can use for lesson planning, for example, and how you can uh, use it for your specific needs. So here we have a popular last 30 days. We have all things and filter by. <clears throat> so if you click on all things, this comes up with a huge list of subcategories. So we have art, fashion, gadgets, hobby, household, models, tools, toys and games, and you'll see a section for learning. And in this learning section, you have biology, you have engineering, you have math, physics, and astronomy. So if we click on biology, for example, we can see a, design, a few designs here that uh, would be applicable for if you taught biology. So we have a human heart, we have a finger splint, which would be a fantastic project to start with. Um, for students that have never 3D printed before. We have lungs, we have a lower jawbone. So as you can see, there are quite a few uh, items that, that can be printed and used towards your lesson. What's great about MakerBot Thing Thingiverse is that MakerBot is geared towards the education industry. And they've actually created in the top right-hand corner, a section specifically for teachers. So I've gone ahead and clicked education. It's thingiverse.com forward slash education. And this is for teachers. And as you can see, it's filtered even further by subject. So you have art, engineering, geography, history, etc. And not only that, but it's filtered by grade as well. So if you teach younger grades, you can choose K to six, or if you teach in high school, you can choose seven to 12. So as an example, I'm going to choose history and then I'm choosing K to six. So as you can see, we've got a T-Rex skull. So if you're teaching about dinosaurs, we have landmarks and buildings, we have hieroglyphics. So a lot of fantastic items on here that we could use to supplement the lesson. Um, in the corner here, you'll see this is a little M and it's this is actually the MakerBot symbol. So this is a, a, a CAD file that was actually uploaded by the MakerBot uh, MakerBot company themselves. So they do have a MakerBot Academy as well that they upload lesson plans specifically for educators on this platform. So as you can see, there's 528 designs specifically made by MakerBot, but I do wanna show you a few in the collections. So once it loads, I'll give you a quick tour of some of the items I really enjoy. So early learning here is for younger students. So you can print alphabets, you can print numbers, you can even print a clock, for example, if you're trying to teach them about time. So it's really great if you do teach younger, younger grades, you can still use 3D printing. Again, structures of government buildings. 
here we have famous expeditions. So if you're teaching about explorers, now you can print their ship and their navigation. There's, I think, four things in this specific one, but I know I found a few more. So I think there's about seven different ships and explorers uh, where you could use for 3D printing. We have famous flyers. So this is human flight. So there's airplanes, there is um, a hot air balloon, there's even a rocket in there as well. So if you want, that is a great way for uh, teaching about science, for example. Uh, there is the MakerBot Academy here, which I will go into, and then I will show you one of my favorites uh, on this site. So we have Human Soul, again about dinosaurs. Here's the ship, one of the ships. We have the Mars Rover, we have a saber-toothed cat. Uh, again, the T-Rex skull, skull, excuse me. But my favorite here is the frog dissection kit, which I think is fantastic. So if you're teaching, I believe it's between grades six to eight, is this what the specific lesson plan is for. Um, instead of having an actual frog and dissecting and having that mess and whatnot, you can actually 3D print this. So as you can see, this is a 3D printed frog. These red items are the parts of the frog which fit directly in the frog for dissecting it, which is very cool. And you can see in here what the CAD files look like when you print it. <clears throat> but if I scroll down, What's fantastic is that MakerBot has actually geared these towards um, teachers. So it gives you a summary. It gives you instructions. So grades six to eight. This specific lesson plan will take between three to five periods. It gives you objectives. So the importance of frogs in their ecosystems or why a frog is suited to its habitat. It also comes with additional materials you may need. Um, and then it comes with a lesson plan. So it breaks it down day by day. So day one is the introduction. Day two, you research the animals online. Day three is the actual dissection. Day, day four, etc. So there are lots of resources available and maybe this is overwhelming and you don't really know where to start. So let me just go back to my presentation and I'll, I'll show you the process that I would start with if you've never done 3D printing before. So do you have any questions about Thingiverse before I change uh, my screen's here. Is Thingiverse a paid? Like, do we pay for like access to the site? No, it's absolutely free of charge. So this, I went on my web browser, I typed Thingiverse.com and everything on here is absolutely free. And it is a community driven um, forum. So you'll find that, the, uh, that's why I showed you the MakerBot one. Um, there are lots and lots of projects. You can even search up here. Uh, if you're looking for something specific, but it is a free community and this education portal is free as well. <clears throat> okay, just going to switch my screens here. Uh, you can see my PowerPoint again. Hopefully. Okay, so there are there are several different methods that you could use for introducing 3D printing into your classroom. So the first method is the simplest, and this is basically to allow your students a quick way to see 3D printing in action and explore the different models that they can create. So basically how it works is you find a file that you wanna print such as a favorite animal. So I've chose Ducky the lop-eared lop bunny, and you'll go in, download the file, prepare it on your printer and then send it to the printer and see it in action. So this simple, um, this simple uh, lesson basically allows for students to have a fast understanding of going from this digital model to the 3D, print, 3D printed model without actually requiring the knowledge of 3D design. Then once they've gotten a hold of that, uh, you can now use the 3D printed objects as a teaching tool so that uh, you can engage students with hands-on learning. So by, by having visual and tangible learning aids, it actually improves students' understanding of the world because they're able to touch it and they're able to see abstract ideas and principles come to life. So if you're a math teacher, for example, you can now print math models. So uh, you can see here the easy as pi fraction. You're able to now present that abstract idea or information of a fraction and give it to them as a tangible object that you might not have been able to do before. And it just helps the students with learning and understanding the concepts. 
And you can use these as part of the lesson, like I showed you with the frog um, dissection. And this allows students to have a more involved approach to 3D printing, and it makes the 3D print printing process actually part of the lesson. So you can integrate it into your lesson and allow the students to take a more active learning process and form a, a more deeper connection with the curriculum, for example. And last but not least uh, is the most important and by far the best is the student led projects as it puts the learning directly into the hands of the students. And these types of projects typically require them to design a solution to either a given problem or maybe a problem that they've identified themselves. But then they can go through the process of the iteration of creating prototypes of a potential solution. But no matter what, they always, always, always have to start with a sketch. So let me just give you a quick example of how this might be implemented into the curriculum. So the Clarence Middle School in New York, they use 3D printing in their school as a, a project to give to students to design a mechanism to grab popcorn without using their hands. So students basically work in groups and they come up with drafts. And once they think that the design could work, they have to figure out what's the cost of production, what's the cost of shipping, how much is it for boxing, marketing of the item. And then finally, they get to print that concept. But sometimes students have to actually re-engineer a project because it just simply doesn't work. So this type of student-led project, it allows the students to become active and engaged participants um, throughout the conception design and execution of their projects. And they're able to interact with the 3D printer as well as the teacher. But going one step further, uh, once students have grasped how a 3D printer works, now you can begin integrating other STEM products with your 3D printer. So for example, 3D scanners can be used to create those 3D models. And these are great for educators as they're really easy to use and they're great for non-technical users. So on the left-hand side, we have the EinScan SE desktop scanner. And this actually creates a model in as little as two minutes and it uses white light and no laser. So it's safe and secure for children to use. Uh, the one on the right-hand side is the EinScan H. And this is a handheld scanner, so you can, you can scan larger items or even people, which is really cool. And that's also a plug and play, and it's really user friendly, and it's easy to operate, especially for, for new people. But even further, if you have a robotics program at your school, which I believe you do, uh, you can now start printing custom 3D parts for your robot so that you can modify it and see how it works especially for VEX Robotics, uh, you can make your own VEX IQ compatible parts because VEX actually provides you with the CAD resources for every single VEX IQ part, which is really cool. You can find it for free on their website as well, and you can start, start printing those products. But the biggest reason we are really adamant on, on schools introducing 3D printing technology is because it gives students the ability to it, it gives them the ability to drive the interest in design. Now, when we look at STEM and we look at driving interest in stu students' interest in STEM, excuse me, it all comes down to design as the base for each of these careers. So it's not only about learning about 3D printing and how it's done, it's, it's about the whole process of how to do it and making different orations. And it all starts with the initial design of the idea. And then you get to make prototypes and then you get to go back to the drawing board to modify that design. But furthermore to this, it offers students the ability to experience their projects from the very beginning, from that conception phase of the initial model, all the way to the actual creation, which creates an excitement in the students. And it gives them a better understanding of how the design process works because they can gain that hands-on experience. And they become active and engaged participants uh, through this whole process while they work on their projects. And they can learn that it's perfectly acceptable to fail on the first try because then they can try again in order to improve. So as students be begin to understand that failure is actually part of the process, they become less afraid to attempt and execute new and different ideas. And that obviously will build the student's confidence and, and you'll see that you'll have more self-motivated and self-confident self students in your classroom. It also provides students with the opportunity to experiment with ideas or expanding and growing their creativity. And they get to explore and grow their imagination because it cultivates innovation and they begin creating their own unique 3D projects. So they can develop the confidence that allows them to pursue challenging courses, uh, such as those in the STEM field. And the last point I wanna make about the student benefits is the fact that it will increase enrollment. 
So parents actually love having technology in the classroom and seeing their children learning about new technologies is a huge, huge deal for them. Especially at a high school level, uh, you could go out to a business and ask them if they need any prototypes, for example. And this way you can give students the real world experience of creating a prototype for a business. And students then begin asking questions like, what other materials will I be able to print in the future? And that brings them to a university level where they're studying the evolution of these types of products. And they can imagine how this may change the manufacturing industry. Now this slide, I wanted to point out that uh, students are now interested in more than just the traditional jobs. So this report was done by Samsung and was released last August. And it was between 16 to 18 year olds that was completed and they're now more interested in digital roles. So a 3D prop designer was actually one of the top 10 dream careers. So when you're welcoming 3D printing in the classroom, you now have a new way of making learning more fun. It's more innovative, interactive for those children. And it may actually provide the students with the opportunity to learn a technology that they might base their future career on, which is fantastic. Now, when we look at the different products that we have available, there's a ton out there on the market, a, bun a few different brands and models. Uh, these three, Affinia, MakerBot, and Dremel, are all great brands for the education industry, and they're all reasonably priced to make them affordable for schools to purchase. So on the left-hand side, this one is the Affinia H series, and this is like an out-of-the-box 3D printing experience, and it comes fully assembled with easy to install instructions. MakerBot in the middle is a professional grade 3D printer and you can print ultra fine or ultra precise parts, excuse me. And the final on the right hand side is the Dremel 3D 45. And these are also easy to install and you can begin printing your very first print after about 15 minutes of installation. And it's minimal noise. So you can actually, you can actually teach while this printer is running. What's great about the Dremel as well, is it comes with a USB with about 30 standard lesson plans on it. But what I do want to tell you about all of these products and what's important is that there is regular cleaning that's required to keep them in tip top shape. So like any piece of equipment, like a table saw, for example, in order to keep it working well, you have to take care of it. And that's why I just wanted to note that you have to take care of these machines as well to make them last as long as possible. Now for each of these, uh, you have to use filament for them. And when, when we look at the different types of material that can be used, ABS and PLA are two of the most common that are being used. So ABS is, uh, allows you to print more durable parts and they actually hold up with extra usage and care. Whereas the PLA may be a little bit softer, softer a little bit less durable, and it's better suited for general all-purpose plastic parts like stationary holders or figurines, for example. Now I won't go into details about the specifics of each of the materials because there are quite a few and it does depend on what you're going to print uh, to decide on what material should, you should be using. So I will provide you with this link which will give you a description of each of them and you can go and read uh, which one would be best suited depending on what projects you want to introduce. But typically ABS and PLA are the most common. Of course, we wanna look at the health and safety of these 3D printers um, because they can emit volatile organic compounds, and these are referred to as VOCs, but they can also emit ultrafine particles as well. Even those enclosed printers don't necessarily protect users from the emissions, so it's really important to look at the health and safety of the printers before you introduce them in the classroom. Thankfully, all the printers that I noted before, they all come with a built-in activated carbon filter and some even with a HEPA filter to reduce the harm. So the HEPA filter removes the ultrafine particles and the activated carbon filters remove the VOCs. But to improve the health and safety of this equipment even further, it's recommended that the printers be installed in a well-ventilated area in a really large classroom with the appropriate ventilation to reduce or even eliminate the harm altogether. Now, lastly, I do wanna tell you that there are further resources for you that are available. This is a free MakerBot educator guide that was created specifically for teachers. And it's a 3D printing guide for teachers. And it includes most of the stuff that I spoke about in my presentation today, but it also includes a lot more than that. So you can look at, you know, turning a sketch into a 3D print or maybe reducing the 3D printing time, even advanced designs for 3D printing. So again, I'll send you the link to download this for free. I'd highly recommend if you're interested in 3D printing to download this guide if you haven't already. 
because it is really fantastic and it's a great tool to use in, in addition to the Thingiverse that I showed you earlier as well. So in summary, 3D printing does provide you with that base skill. It provides students with how to design, which is the base skill for most of the STEM careers out there. And there are several resources available to yourself. If you're a novice user and you're looking to teach 3D printing, there are several resources available. Last but not least, and the most important, 3D printing can increase the student engagement, which is extremely important in any classroom in any school. We want those students to be engaged and participating and learning about uh, whatever they have to listen to and what learn. So now I'm going to open up the floor to questions. I'll invite Dean back into the presentation so he can help out with some of those questions. But Penny, did you have anything outstanding that you would like to ask? No, I don't think so. This was a really great presentation. Um, I actually found a couple of 3D printers in the basement at my school. And nice. so I don't even know what, what they are. I'll check them out next week when I go into the building to see what they are. But I was just looking on okay. into the classroom and use them if they're just sitting there, right? Yeah, of course. Of course. That's fantastic. And once you find the model out, you can, you can let Dean know and uh, he could probably help you out with either material that can help you for that. If you need new filament, I'm, I'm not sure if you have any down there or not, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, It'll fantastic. Fun though. Um, be, yeah. But that was like a really great presentation on how, like it got my brain thinking of how I'm going to teach with it. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's well, good. Okay, I found a couple of 3D printers in my school, so I thought we should use them. And I thought I'd like to start teaching with it. And I was given grade nine and 10 tech classes for next year. So what better way to put it in there, right? So since I have the class. Yeah. Absolutely. That's fantastic. I, I like the um I like the idea of giving them like a, a problem and then working through on a solution for their own. I was like, when you were talking about all the different ideas, I was thinking medicine, like I was thinking prosthetics or something, some kind of problem with that. But again, I don't even know what materials there are. I don't even know if the machines work, right? Like it'll be next week, I'll go in and, and check it all out, but. Definitely. And there, if you go to Thingiverse and you type prosthetics, for example, you will find quite a few on there as well. Uh, and some of them might even come with lesson plans. There are quite a few that do have lesson plans associated with them. So that might be super helpful if you do want to introduce it. It could give you an idea of how to go about it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. And I love like doing the history of it. I was like, that was a great way to, for you to start your presentation. And I'm like, I'm oh, totally great. It was, even I learned something because I really <laughs> didn't know the history of 3D printing. I just knew how it worked. So that was excellent. Yeah, really good. Thank you. Thanks Perfect. for your time for me. I'm at the trailer. No. <laughs> See the big window. Well, I appreciate you joining. Thank you so much. And hopefully you enjoy your rest of your summer. That's amazing. <laughs> it looks beautiful there. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks, Penny. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.